In the fall, I reviewed the latest iPad Pro, the one with the fancy new M2 processor, and my grade was incomplete. There was potential there, but the features I was most interested in, the, the pencil hover, external monitor support, some of the promising new Pro apps, none of those were ready at launch. Now they are. So this is take two on my iPad Pro 2022 review. Hello, it's Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. Let's start with what I care about most, which is this new pencil hover feature. At launch, I could only really see it in Apple's Notes app. And yeah, you could hover over the screen, you could see your cursor, cool. It works. Now it's implemented all over the place in a lot of different apps. Now a lot of people in the tech community, when they saw this feature, they yawned and, and I get it. But for illustrators, it's a much bigger deal. At its simplest, you can hover the Apple Pencil over the screen or over your canvas and it shows you your brush size before you start painting, before you lay anything down. If you're using something like a Wacom tablet in Photoshop on the desktop, you're going to see the shape of your brush. You're going to see the size of that brush. You're going to be able to see what happens if you're tilting that brush before you do anything with it. So it's understandable that one of the problems that many illustrators had when they were transitioning from painting on the desktop to painting on an iPad was losing a lot of that information because the Apple Pencil didn't have any of it. It just added a lot of chance to your brush stroke. So cool. It is here now, but Procreate decided to add a little bit of pizzazz to this feature. So for example, when you are hovering, you can also see your brush's color, maybe a better representation of what that texture is. It's not just an outline, but you'll see the texture itself. You can resize brushes on the fly by hovering and then pinching in and out on the screen to increase the size. So if you want to really just match the exact width of your incline, you can do that now. And of course, many of these changes extend to the eraser tools and the Blend tools. So right now, Hover is only on the new M2 powered iPad Pro. From what I understand, it's enabled on a hardware level using some of the sensors in the new processor. It doesn't sound like this is something that's just gonna roll out to older iPads, you know, with a software update down the road. And in my last review, I, I saw many comments where people were very disappointed in that, which is understandable if you've picked up last year's iPad Air or maybe last year's Pro, and you're hoping to get that feature retroactively activated but right now looks like it's M2 and beyond. Next up is external monitor support. Before I get to that, I do want to shout out today's sponsor, Squarespace. You probably already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website for your brand or business, but it's also one of the best ways to engage with your audience. Squarespace has member areas. This makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand with members areas. You can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to things like gated content videos, online courses, or even newsletters. And you can customize all this to fit within your brand with Squarespace's best-in-class website templates. Browse the category of your business and find the perfect starting place and see how well your business is performing with Squarespace's analytics. Learn where your site visits are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, the next feature that I've been somewhat excited about, just kind of generally interested in, is better external monitor support for the iPad. Now, what iPads have done up to this point, if you plug them into an external display, is they mirror it. But now you can actually use a second display as a second display the way a laptop does. It's a little bit quirky. It doesn't work exactly the way a laptop would, but I can see where this would be useful if you're drawing on an iPad all day and you want to have your email, social media, a web browser open on a second screen and visible while you're drawing, it makes a ton of sense. This feature became available with the iPad OS 16.2 update that came out a few weeks back and it does work on several iPad models beyond this Pro works on the M1 iPad Air and the M1 Pro from last year as well. You will also have to have a keyboard and mouse attached in some capacity to your iPad, whether that's via Bluetooth or USB or whether you're using the Magic Keyboard cover in order to take full advantage of this. And the reason why is because this new feature takes advantage of Apple's new Stage Manager feature, which does require a keyboard and mouse to navigate around that second screen. So even though 
while I am connected to a Wacom tablet that does have touch, the iPad doesn't know that that monitor has touch, so it can't use it. So you're forced to use that secondary monitor only with that keyboard and that mouse. There is an invisible grid lying underneath everything. So when you pull a window over or when you move in something new or move it around, it doesn't go to exactly where you put it. It snaps into place just a little bit off. This is something I have been having a little bit of trouble adapting to. I am so ingrained in the desktop world where my windows can be whatever size I need them to be and where I can put them wherever I want them to be. A lot of apps are designed to work touch first, so moving them over to this monitor without touch takes away what they do best. So for example, I threw Procreate up there for a minute just to have it up there, you know, as a reference sort of thing. And it was kind of unusable without touch. That and it opened my picture sideways and I was using the trackpad to turn it and then I couldn't pan it back into place. It was just weird. So I'm glad the feature's here, but it is implemented in this quirky, fun Apple way that isn't gonna fit everybody's workflow, probably doesn't really fit mine. The last thing I do wanna touch on are pro level apps. We have had some great graphic apps in this space for years now. Several drawing apps like Clip Studio Paint have been available. That is a feature for feature copy of the desktop app. Affinity Designer, Photo Publisher, those are all out on the iPad now. They have rethunk their interfaces a little bit to work better with touch. Version two of their software just launched last month. So now you can buy it in a $99 bundle and use it on the iPad and the desktop and use it everywhere. And then there is video. Video apps have been out there for a while, but they've been kind of lacking. They're just basic video editing apps. And so now we're seeing apps like DaVinci Resolve, a hardcore video editing app coming to the iPad. You have this crazy good processor now, so let's get something in here that can use it. I've never used DaVinci Resolve before, so it would not be fair of me after using it for an afternoon to judge it. I'm, I'm sure it's a wonderful program. I watched some videos that some other folks have made about it, and there's the vibes generally around it seem to be very, very positive. In the short time that I used it, I did like what I saw. One thing missing right now are tool tips on Hover. That is something that is in the desktop app, so learning this on the iPad is really tricky. I was having a hard time. There are all these icons. You can't see what they are when you hover over them. So it's just kind of guesswork. I do understand that is something they're working on. So keep your eye on DaVinci Resolve in the future. Looks pretty darn cool. The iPad has been making strides, like slowly improving their file system. So that sort of thing has gotten so much better in the last few years, of course you are still going to be living in Dongleville uh, with your videos when you're pulling that stuff off your camera car. Now, another app that I've been playing with, which I think is really cool, is Apple's new whiteboarding app. It is called Freeform. It's for writing notes and pulling in photos, adding some text, or even your Procreate files. And it lets you do some mishmashy, collage type things. It is free, and it will probably be shipping by default on new iPads in the future. That makes a ton of sense. This app is designed to be a showcase of all the iPad's little features like dragging and dropping, pulling images out of photos. So sure, you could do this on the desktop, but I feel that it's really slick on an iPad. So there we go. It was fun to come back and revisit this thing and see how things have uh, kind of shaken out as uh, all these new features are really implemented. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you a couple of days.